Greetings and welcome to Jeff Oak Films. Today we're going to talk about a supernatural horror film. I'd add sci-fi because there is a sci-fi element in there. Done in 1980. Good year. Directed by John Hugh, who did The Halloween 4 and Treasure Island. I want to get to Treasure Island. So let's review The Watchers in the Woods. Ellie, come on, we should head back. You better tell us to Eric. Ellie, I mean it now. Come back, Ellie. <laughs> This movie starts with a family driving with a realtor to check out a secluded home. It's too good to be true. And Mrs. Hallowood lives in a cottage next to the home. She owns both properties and she tags along as they look through the house. She also stares at Jan, the older daughter, a lot. And Paul shows off his piano playing skills and Jan sees something. To yourself. Mrs. Alwood starts asking Jan some strange questions, and Jan's getting a weird vibe about this place. The realtor tells Jan that Alwood had a daughter about her age, and then the next day they move in. Well, I guess they decided the mirrors aren't working. The mirror breaks and everything seems to break in a triangular pattern. Mom says goodnight to her daughters and Jan notices Mrs. Alwood going to the woods that night. Later she's woken up to Ellie having a bad dream and dreaming pretty loudly. Jan lets Ellie crash with her that night. The next day they meet Mike and he lets Ellie pick a dog and she names it Narek. Mary Fleming is talking to Helen and is spooked by the name Karen written on the window and Ellie's playing with her pup and a strange man comes out of the woods and then Ellie is missing and Jan's worried. She can't find her, she finds her radios so she goes into the woods but she does eventually find her. Oh yeah, isn't this foggy, creepy place really beautiful? And then there's this light ring under the water. And get a leash on that dog. Jan falls into the water and almost drowns as she's stuck to a tree. Mrs. Alwood comes by and uses a branch and saves her and takes her back to her place. Jan sees Karen in the mirror and that was Mrs. Alwood's daughter. And then we get a flashback of Karen and her friends running around playing. Then there was a light show, a fire, and all the kids were running except Karen was never found. Helen seems more upset at Mrs. Alwood telling her daughter a story than the fact that she actually almost drowned. Later they cheer on Mike at a motorbike race that he's competing in, and then Ellie gets a vision and tells Jan to move, which is lucky because... Mike drives Jan later and they talk about Karen and her disappearance and then he talks to his mom later about it. Mary says there was a summer storm that night with lightning and the bell tower went aflame and she never returned. Paul's got a music concert to go to so he, him and his wife leave and then Mike takes the two daughters out riding. Mike wants to go back through the woods but then a sudden wind scares the horses and Ellie's pulled towards the road. Jan's horse doesn't stop till it dumps her at a church cemetery. Damn you, Coco! And then she decides to look around and she sees a vision of Karen. And then she's stalked by a creepy Tom Collie who ends up chasing her till Mike shows up. Then he runs off. Mike doesn't really believe her, but just maybe you should. We get quite the rainstorm and then Tom goes to see John Keller and tells him he saw Karen at the chapel. The night we... Now I've told you never to talk about that night. Has she come back from the grave to haunt us for what we've done, Mr. Keller? Is it the ghost of Karen I've seen? Tom implies something happened worthy of being haunted. And Jana might go to a carnival and go into the funhouse mirror place. Not a good idea. So many Karens. And Mike continues not to believe her. Jan thinks Karen wants to find out what happened. Dude, be supportive. I haven't seen any girls her age in this town whatsoever, so... So Jan decides to go to the church and talk to John Keller about this, and she knows stuff, and he's not happy. I had to see you. It's about Karen Aylwood. What about Karen Aylwood? 
She needs help. We did see Mary leave John's place. Jan decides to go into the woods and is chased by an evil dead cam. She calls out Tom Colley's name and finds an abandoned place, which I guess it's an abandoned because he's living there. It's just pretty shitty. And we get an aggressive cat scare. <laughs> If Tom would just talk, he'd be way less creepy. He finally figures out that Jan is not Karen, and we learn that he takes care of animals and nurtures them back to health. Tom's a little slow and Jan tries to get some answers out of him, so he gives us a flashback of Tom, John, and Mary. It was a stormy night and John gives us a pretty culty vibe, and they say it was lightning, but it looks like lasers from the ground and the bell tower fell. Mrs. Alwood brings Ellie into her place to show her an old music box that was Karen's and because she thinks Ellie can hear things. Where? Chapel. Soon. Very soon. Tell us how. No, not Karen, but need help. If you're not Karen, who are you? Apparently not Karen wants them to open the chapel door. And then mom shows up and says, she's tired of the shit. We're leaving. Where is dad? And they get in the car and they drive. And then the car dies on the bridge. And Jan says, they need to get out now. What are you doing? Come on. We have to get off the bridge. Now, will you believe your daughter? They go home and the phones are dead. Ellie wakes up in the middle of the night and wanders off. Then Jan wakes off to find Ellie and she finds her writing on the mirror, do again tomorrow. Next day is sunny, but there's gonna be an eclipse because there was one when Karen disappeared. And then Jan tells Mike to bring her mom to the chapel and then she goes to talk to Keller and she tells Mrs. Alwood her plan as well. Jan's a busy bee. Mike and the others show up and so does Ellie and Narek and they stare at the eclipse and then Narek runs off. It's called a leash. Fucking get one. Super Windy Machine follows Ellie and Jan tries to recreate the culty speech. We ask the question, is this person one of me? Listen. Ready to return. I've been trapped on your planet. Karen in my dimension. Possessed Ellie tells him to continue with the ceremony and goddamn Mary just keeps breaking a circle. That's why Karen disappeared the first time. You broke the circle, Mary. Possessed Ellie wants just to return home. That's what happened. Karen got transferred to her dimension. And then Karen is returned. Jan is fine. The mom shows up. She takes the blindfold off and they hug. The end. Based on a novel with a darker ending, the Watcher was a female humanoid child and her parents were doing a coming of age ceremony and wanted her to view Earth, but the portal was so close that they actually just transferred Karen and they swapped places. She could only communicate through telepathy and Ellie because they were both children. 50 years on our planet is one day on theirs. That's why Karen had an age. In the book, Karen's mom joins her on the alien homeworld. Diane was offered the role of Jan in Decline, so Lynn Holly Johnson went on to do it, and then she also went on to do For Your Eyes Only, a Bond flick. This was a Disney film, thus the producers, even back then, kept interfering and they wanted to make it less scary. Critics shit on the original ending with skeleton insectoid aliens and a crippled spacecraft, so it was already shot. It had a lot of themes that are still used today. Betty Davis played Mrs. Alwood, and she had done a lot of work. She even actually did the original Death on the Nile. Kyle Richards, who played Ellie, actually grew up to be somewhat recognizable. I've seen her in other things, even Halloween. In the end, I remember watching this as a child. Probably shouldn't have seen it as a child. Thanks parents, I'm sure there were no side effects there. I remember like Narek being Karen spelled backwards and all these cool little things. The wind machine's pretty awesome. The rain machine's pretty awesome. And really, this just comes down to a transporter accident. You know, somebody from another dimension transports to a parallel universe in another dimension. And then Karen's stuck with these aliens. I hope they were hospitable and not pissed and beat her to death all the time because you know, you took our daughter from us. Though, you know, 50 years is one day there, so they only really had a day to torture her. That's why Karen was still young. 
it's got to be pretty weird, you know, coming back to your life, being the same age you left, and everybody else is so much older. Though she was barely friends with, like, Tom and John and Mary, so they were just starting to be friends. She was getting inducted into the cult that day, so, you know, it's hard to form a relationship with people when you haven't even really spent a day in the cult. Yeah, interesting movie. Why don't you check it out? It's done by Disney, guys. It can't be that bad, right? As always, thanks for watching.